Hey horror fans, welcome back to Room 237, coming at you with another Universal Monster review. And this time I'm doing the only uh, set in this box set that has a single film that is from 1943, Phantom of the Opera. Which, I didn't even think about this when I did my review for the box set, but why the Fuck, did they not put the 1925 Family Opera on here? It's universal. <laughs> Clearly, it's a monster film if this one is. I, I know in 1953, Universal lost the rights, but it went to the public domain, which means anybody can use it for anything. So if that's the case, why? They could have had two the two versions on here, Especially since the 1925 one is, you know, right off the bat, highly superior. Anyway, I mean, maybe if it's in the public domain and they lost the rights, they can't. I don't know. But either way, yeah, this is the only film of the box set that has no sequels or anything else. Completely standalone. And... It's also the only one that's in color. They did colorize it. It was shot in color. And this movie... It, it even stars Claude Rains as the Phantom, who is not named Eric. He's named something Claude in. And, I mean, Claude Rains played... The Invisible Man and the original Invisible Man, and he was phenomenal in that. But he doesn't have shit to do in this movie. This this movie is actually kind of boring. I, I I wasn't the biggest fan of this. And Phantom of the Opera is another movie like Frankenstein or Dracula, where. It is based on a classic novel. It's based on the 1910 novel by Gaston Leroux. And it's had 14,000 adaptations since, you know, the, the book and present. I have three. I have the 1925 version, 1943, and I have the Hammer film, which is from 62 or 63. I know there's another film from, I think, 89. There's the Joel Schumacher one from 2004, which I haven't seen, but I've heard is pretty bad. And who knows how many other ones. But, <clears throat> so yeah, I have three of them. I will be doing the Hammer one soon. But, this, it... This movie, some of the choices they made, I mean, it's, it was directed by Arthur Lubin. Not sure what else he did. God damn it. Arthur Lubin. Just some of the choices that they made in this film. He directed several Abbott Costello films. He created Mr. Ed. Okay. Huh. So, okay. In the original, we don't know anything about the Phantom. He's this legendary sort of urban legend figure. But we see, you know, he wears you know, the jacket, the cape. The, the mask. We don't know why he wears it. And then there's that suspenseful scene when he's playing the piano and Christine played by at in the original of uh, Mary Philbin comes up behind him, takes the mask off when we get that shocking moment where we see his face. We don't know why he looks like that. In this though, the first half hour of this film is the backstory of who he is 
and how he became disfigured. So, yeah, it adds tragedy because they really, you know, go the Joker route with this guy. I mean, he's... He, he's a violinist. He's losing um, function of his left hand. He gets fired from the orchestra. He's... There's this um, the singer that he's um, been paying uh, for her lessons, played by uh, Susanna Foster, plays uh, uh, Christine Dubois. Her last name was different in the original, but it's still Christine. So when he gets fired, he has no money for rent. He gets kicked out. Desperate for money, he has this uh, concerto that he wrote. Spent two years writing. He submitted it. Didn't hear anything. He goes to the publisher. Tells him it was garbage and he threw it away. But he's actually stealing it. <sniffs> the guy's life sucks. In a fit of rage, he attacks and kills the guy. And the wife throws acid on him. So, right there, we lose all the suspense as to what he looks like and that whole, when Christine does lift the mask, it's not that horrific, like, from the original. It looks more like the intense gopher or whatever it is on YouTube. Da, da, da. It looks more like that. It actually... The, that whole part was like halfway through the, the first film. This one, like, you, you don't really get the, the masked ball opera. You do, but not as much. It's not as interesting or kind of imposing. Like, you had like the death, the red death figure sort of impending doom kind of opera as he cuts the chandelier and it falls on the audience that which that and then him kidnapping Christine taking her down to his lair that is all in the last 10 minutes of the movie like he really doesn't get to do shit before that there's the part where he drugs the other singer, the, the prima donna. That's all Claude Rains gets to do in this movie. He doesn't get to do a damn thing. <clears throat> but I, I will say the woman that played the prima donna did a good job because she was a rotten bitch. Jade Farrar, a spoiled diva. Yeah, she, he drugs her so she falls unconscious so Christine gets to sing. And she's a big sensation because she was just in the chorus. And she thinks her and her uh, voice coach or whoever he is drugged her. So she wants them arrested. They're like, no, there's no evidence. Just, you know, forget about it. She says, I'll forget about it as long as, you know, we forget she sang. Like, you can't, you have to tell the papers not to say anything about her in their reviews. And she does good at playing a fucking bitch about it. So she did a good job. The only other pros I could give it would be the scope of the film. The scope is actually pretty grand. They did use the set of the Paris Opera House from the original film. It is, you know, it is a very lavish film. It is very vibrant with color. They definitely took advantage of color. The, the sets, the costumes, everything looks very epic. And, you know, there's a lot of grandeur to it. I will give it that. It doesn't feel like a horror movie, though. The only time it feels like a horror movie is when Claude Rains as the Phantom is on screen. <laughs> Which is very seldomly. 
it actually feels more like a romantic comedy of the time. Because you have her voice coach of, of Anatoly and the a, a detective who's looking for him from killing the guy in the beginning. So, um, Nelson Eddy plays Anatoly and Edgar Barrier plays Raoul. They're both competing for her affection. So you just get these scenes where they're doing like passive aggressive digs at each other. And then they always have to leave the room together. And they keep doing the after you, no, after you. And then they like bump into each other going out the door. And it, it, the score goes with it. Makes it very humorous, but it's not very funny. And I will say also the, the score for this... Unlike the original, the original had scores put to it. Even if it was written for it, different scores were used. This one has a score written specifically for it, so the music does kind of go with it a little more. But it doesn't have that dark, impending doom kind of almost ominous kind of orchestra that this one has. This one just feels like a light-hearted, almost period piece of like a romantic comedy. <laughs> and how the Phantom, like, okay, the Phantom gets chased out of his lair. And he's chased through the city by people with torches and pitchforks, which they did that before Frankenstein. That that trope and cliche even precedes Frankenstein with the original opera, Phantom, Phantom of the Opera. And he makes it all the way down to the, it's not really a harbor, but it's like a, a walkway down to the water. And he like, pretends to reach for something and there's nothing there and he just kind of laughs as they all come after him. That's a good ending. Here, they're down in his lair. Raul and Anatoly come in. Raul just shoots and then one bullet somehow makes the whole underbelly of this opera down in the sewers just collapse. And like some stone comes off falls and lands on Claude Rains. Very anti... Very anticlimactic. <clears throat> it... It really is, like... I'm trying to think of a... Suicide Squad. Okay, I was going to try to be relevant and think of another... A horror movie or like Universal Monster film, Suicide Squad. You're like, okay, that guy, Jared Leto, that just won the Oscar for Dallas Buyers Club, who's a great actor, he's gonna play Joker, but we're gonna give him like 17 seconds of screen time. <laughs> I know he got more than that. Uh, Friggin' modern day DC fans will tear me a shred to the comments. I'm making an analogy and a joke. Back off. But it's like that with this. Claude Rains, the guy who played the original Invisible Man and a number of other horror films, is playing Phantom of the Opera. Originally played by Lon Chaney. That should be really cool. But no. We're going to give him <clears throat> the most tragic backstory that we can think of we're gonna give him a couple shots like where you see him kind of holding up his cape and being in shadows which one part doesn't even make sense because christine's in her dressing room and she hears his voice say something like you know don't worry, you'll be a star one day, or I will help you. 
and she looks and we see you know like stone and shadow like outside and he like he runs away but there's no windows for her to look out of so how the fuck we see that we see him we see his hand take this glass out of out of frame then put it back when he drugged the prima donna and then the ending he cuts the chandelier which they try to make suspenseful but it's not even a dreadful kind of opera like orchestra or anything to go along with it they they drag that out it falls he takes Christine he she doesn't recognize him or his voice I, I know he's wearing a mask but still he plays his piece for a little and they do play his concerto to kind of lure him out he plays the piano for like a little bit and she just comes over rips the mask you get the intense go for the intense prairie dog whatever the fuck that duh, duh, is poor kind of makeup job is just like which I understand for the little amount of screen time they're not gonna go all out but the makeup is no Lon Chaney and then just to have the two guys come in, one bullet, his whole layer comes in and just kills him. I guess there was going to be a sequel. It was going to be called The Climax. And Nelson Eddy, Susanna Foster, and Claude Rains were all going to return. Implying that he survived. But story troubles and... Claude Rains not being 100% able to return. Um, it, it didn't really happen. But there was a film called The Climax with Susanna Foster, uh, Turan Bay, and Boris Karloff. But it's new characters in a new plot. So it's not really a sequel. I haven't seen that yet. But I was going to bring up a picture of... Claude Reed's... Phantom. See if there's just a picture of him... Probably no comparison with Lon Chaney, but okay. I'm sure you all know what Lon Chaney's Phantom looks like. I mean, okay, but it's not... For that kind of reveal, which is already a lame-ass reveal, I will say they had a cool ending. Once they walk out, there's the sad music. She says, you know, I'm glad he got to hear his concerto before he died. The camera then goes in through all the rubble. There's still the smoke. And we see his busted violin laying on the ground with his mask over it. So, okay, that's kind of poetic and nice. But then you get this stupid scene where Christine had a, you know, she was a big success. But then it. Anatoly and Raul both asked her out. They make her choose, but she walks off into the adoring crowd. They decide to go to dinner together. They do the door at the same time joke, and then they just link arms and walk out together at the end. So they even fucked up their own ending. They had a, you know, that final shot with the mask and the violin would have been a decent shot to end it with like you could have said at least that looks cool but then they did this stupid joke that stupid epilogue <clears throat> this movie is only good in scope and a, a production value I guess performances 
Claude Rains is underwhelmingly underused. It's kind of a, a shame how underused he is. The Every bit of suspense because of the backstory is killed. The reveal is so lackluster. It is just a wildly poor film. It is a wildly poor horror film compared to the original. But eventually I'll get to the Hammer one. We'll see how that does. But yeah, I was not the biggest fan of this. But anyway, thank you for watching.